I'm Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you so much for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. Now, I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm delighted to welcome my special guest to the show today, Larry Wydell. Larry, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be here. I'm glad you're with me, and I want to tell our listening audience that you have spent the past 40 years building a national financial services organization and helping the people on your team achieve the success they want. Today, you hold weekly coaching calls for leaders across the U.S. and Canada, and Larry has videos, articles, and other resources on career success, leadership, and sales that are wildly popular. A graduate of Georgia Tech, Larry divides his time between Aspen, Colorado, and Palm Beach, Florida. I was in Naples, Florida this weekend, so Larry, welcome to the show, and I'm so glad you're with me. Thanks so much. So let's talk about your book, Serial Winner. Tell me what prompted you to write this book. Well, there's a idea that we've had in uh, uh, our organization and training for years, and that is that the world is full of people who almost do things, and uh, what we need is more people who actually do things. Okay. And in most, as in most com companies or organizations, you look around and you see so many people have so much potential, uh, studying hard, learning, wanting to get ahead, but for some reason they're stuck and just like you, Carolyn, very busy. I'm very busy, and we don't really have time to take these people under our wings and spend endless hours where you could you could uh, give them the you could find out what it is. And a lot of us, like myself, I had access to mentors and people who cared about me that I could spend that time with one on one. But not everybody has that. And so I thought that uh, the book would be useful in identifying the five really key spots along the way that uh, you run into anytime you want to get something done. In life, uh, you know, they're not going to have on your tombstone that, hey, here was somebody who really intended to do a lot of great things, or here's somebody who had a lot of potential to do great things. If they put anything on your tombstone, it's what you did. Life is has to do with what you do. And whenever you're going to do things, there's about five stages you go through. And if once you know how, how it works, you can stay in control of your life, keep yourself on track, self-manage yourself to success over and over again. Well, I love that concept of self-management because as, as a fellow coach, I think it's important that we empower people to take control and tap the power that I, that they have. But let's talk about this because so many people think that they can't win if they don't have, let's call it the advantages that others have, like education or family or connections. So how would you as a coach, Larry, and a leadership developer help others break through that mindset? Well, depending on how we grow, grow up, uh, the way I like to think of it, we all grow up in a cocoon, okay, and that okay. is we're formed by the impressions, the beliefs the, uh, of the people that raised us, and the not only the family, but the community and the extended family, and we really don't know where, you know, what those misconceptions are until we get out in the world and we start trying to do things, and then we find that we have limiting beliefs, mm. and, uh, you know, it's so easy to feel sorry for yourself. You know, it's it's funny. When anybody goes into a, a room of people like at a party or something, they assume everybody else knows everybody else except them. You know, mm, yeah. they feel like everybody else feels confident. They're the only ones who feel insecure. And uh, they feel like when they go through life, they're the only ones that gets confused that everybody else is knows what they're doing. And so we all feel a little bit sorry for ourselves when we get into pressure situations and the first thing to getting through that is to, is to not let yourself off the hook 
because of some limiting belief that's really totally uh, uh, a fallacy. And, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to get beat because of a flawed concept. Right, uh, right. And what I'm hearing you say is it's, it's all about making a decision, right, and, and deciding to be a player. Of course, we all experience fear and, and risk and what if I make a mistake. But I'm hearing you say, don't be cautious. Take action. Would you agree with that? Well, the deal is that, you know, I get asked, can, uh, can anybody be a winner? Of course because winning is doing what you want to do in your life. Winning is doing what you feel like you're put on the planet to do, what you're motivated to do, what you have skills, ability, and opportunity to do, and the kinds of things when you do them, you get excited. Yeah, you, feel you energize. Yep. You're energized. Yep. And you're, you know, it's inspired. You get an inspiration, you follow it, and then all of a sudden these abilities come out from inside you, come out as you go, and you're, you kind of... Un it's not just tap into what's inside you. You unleash, yeah. uh, you know, the greatness that's inside of you. And if you're going to do well in any situation, you've got to be turned on and excited about doing it. And so when uh, the idea of making a decision is to go ahead and go after the things that are inside you that you keep thinking about, go bouncing around in your head until you decide to go after it, you don't know if that's just a whim or if that's really a uh, lifetime purpose that it's going to turn into. And once you decide and go for, you know, there's no reason to sit around and think about it forever. You know, you're stalled. You know, life is for living. And so you make a decision and go after it. I just went by the airport here. I'm visiting in Greensboro, North Carolina today. And uh, when I lived here, I spent a hundred, I thought it'd be great to be a pilot. And I spent, you can all, you could be a, you can become a pilot, I think, with only 40 hours of instruction. I took, wow. 100, I took 140 hours of instruction because I kept, my, kept getting uh, interrupted and, uh, with traveling and weather and all before I did my solo. But after I soloed one time, I got on the ground, I handed them the keys and said, that's it. I'll never do it. <laughs> and, but, but, you know, I got it out of my system. And that's the thing is, you know, if you've got something inside, make a decision, go for it, and let it turn into something great or, uh, you know, get it out of your life and, and move on to something else. So I hear the urgency and the necessity of making decision, and I agree with you. You also believe that at that point, once you make that decision, give it your all and, and put every effort into it. And, and you even talk about overdoing. Will you explain that to me? I think the worst advice is do it. Just do it. Uh. And because we all, uh, we as individuals, companies, and uh, countries, you know, governments, underestimate what projects are going to take in terms of time and cost at the beginning. And, uh, we, you know, we... Uh, I, you used to build houses. You could, you know, it, they always cost more, took longer. Always. Uh, <laughs> especially when you're building the dream home. You know, oh, the yeah. One you've never built before. Once you've built, you know, it's not like apartments where you do them over and over and over. You can get it down to a science. But when you're doing new projects in your life, the tendency is to underestimate time and money. So what happens is when it, when you get off, run into problems and, uh, obstacles, you, you default. And that's why people, as we go into the new year, they're going to, you know, 90% of the people are, are not going to hit, hit their new year's resolutions because not because they couldn't do it, but because they didn't attack the resolution. They didn't go for it with everything they've got. They kind of just did it. And so people who get ahead, people who wind up having the success like you've had in your life, have you know they get an idea and they go for it with everything they've got i'm sure you didn't like go through the motions uh when you were starting your career or even continuing and developing it to where it is now writing the books and doing all the talks and everything i mean i, I you know one thing carolyn you know we're good enough to you'll find that you're good enough to do some pretty amazing things in life but you'll also find you're not good enough doing it half-heartedly piddling around. If you're going to do great things, you got to give it everything you've got. So from the beginning, it's much better advice to say, 
I'm going to not stick my toe in the world, uh, in the, in, in the pot, pool there and just kind of do it and gradually get, I'm going to jump in. I'm, I'm going to dive this. in. I hear you. You're speaking my language. So Larry, your next step is adjustment. So help me understand the difference between quitting and adjusting. No plan A ever works. Because life is, <laughs> so know, true. So true. Plan A is to get you started. Plan A is to convince you yourself that this thing can work. I see this thing working. But what happens is the variables change. You know, life is a changing environment, very complex. And when things go wrong, uh, if you, you know, you have this Pollyanna approach, when things go wrong, uh, you feel like persecuted. You feel uh, like it's your fault. The default uh, mode that people go to is poor, pitiful me. This is too hard. I'm not good enough. I shouldn't have even tried. All my friends and relatives were right. You know, I shouldn't have done that. Where what you should say is, okay, this way won't work. What's the best next way? Yeah. You know, you, know, you need to not let yourself become a, 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 a you know high drama person just because something goes wrong in your life. You know, you realize you need to realize leaving your house every single day. You're going to run into things that go wrong, that upset the apple cart, but they're not that complicated. They're not that overwhelming unless you unless you let them be, uh, uh, you know, by having emotional outburst and all that. Just say, well, if we don't do it this way, we'll do it that way. So you've got to be flexible and you've got to say to yourself, I know things are not going to go perfect when they go wrong. I'm not going to start whining and giving up. I'm going to make an adjustment. I like it. I like it. I like to often use the word nimble, right? We've got to be flexible. We've got a zig. We've got a zag. So right. thank you for that. Well, what I love about the book is it's so filled with action steps. And the uh, fourth action is finish. So walk me through that. Because from your perspective, you say that so many of us don't finish the last bit of the project. We have trouble closing. So talk to me about that. Well, until you have got a track record of successes behind you, you don't understand the psychology and the effort of finishing a project. We used to say when I, I built houses first coming out of Georgia Tech that, uh, uh, you know, it we used to say, it, it's not true, but we used to say to ourselves, it takes 98% of the effort to get the last 2% done. <laughs> and you know, it seemed like that. Yeah, and yeah. Because, you know, by the end of a project, you know, once you're into something, you're just about at the finish line. Usually you've drained your enthusiasm and your, you know, your euphoria of starting something new. You know, visions of sugar plum have long since disappeared. You're exhausted. You're worn out. You're kind of, you're ready for it to be over. Uh, and it's easy to get distracted. It's easy Murder. to... It's easy to settle for getting close and then letting your mind wander to something else. But they say even, uh, you know, what we do is we see light, light at the end of the tunnel. But that is an optical illusion. Because when you say, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, the impression we have in our mind is, if I just kind of keep coasting and stay on track, I'm going to get there. Because I'm essentially there. I'm going to kind of coast through, but that's not the way it is. There's always a climb to the top. You know, to finish something, there's always, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel goes up. You can't see it. You know, it's like any mountain that uh, people aspire to climb in the world, it goes, it's a peak. It's a mountain peak. So once you go all of the miles and this, that, and the other, and the air is thin, you still have a big summit to go through. That's going to be the steepest part that you've had to deal with. And at that time, like even real mountain climbers, they say the closer you get to the top, the more breaks you take, the slower you go, because you want to keep yourself on track and you, you don't want to uh, over, you know, overdo it and cause yourself to uh, collapse. You want to pace yourself through the finish line. So the closer you get to it, you do not let, you understand, I am not going to... Most people, when they quit, they quit stupidly. They mm. quit when they're 98% of the way there, and then they let themselves get sidetracked, and it's like climbing a flagpole to get to a big prize. It's like a million dollars at the top of the flagpole, 
and you get about two, three feet from it, and you're exhausted, and then a bird flies by, and you say, look at the bird, and then you lose your grip, and you slide back down to the bottom, you know? Wow. And, uh, you can't, at, once you get close to the finish line, you keep your eye on that thing, you, now, you know, that's not the time to start reason or evaluating, should you have done it, could you have done it better, was this the right thing? No, at that point, you just lock in on finishing and then think, you know, worry about your thinking and planning and that kind of stuff, you know. So don't let yourself get sidetracked and, and uh, or anything beat you. The closer you get to the finish line, the more determined you've got to be to actually finish it because you put so much work in. So let's talk, Larry, about the fifth action, which is to keep improving. And you talk about the ABI principle, always be improving. Tell me why that's essential for serial winners. Because none of us know the future. Mm. None of us are perfect. None of us all, you know, everybody has some gifts, but none of us have all the gifts. And you've never, you know, no matter who, what kind of great breakthrough anyone has in life or a team has, nobody ever ha wins by being perfect. And so there's always things that you can improve on. And when you're, what, you know, it's like this, what, there are things that we all want to do that we know we're not good enough to do today. But if we keep improving, then we can get good enough. Like if you improve just 1% per day, make a little bit extra effort, 1% extra effort doesn't seem like much. But over a week, a month, a year, or several years becomes astronomical, the difference. And that's why people look around and they see people that they know they're better than, they know that, uh, you know, they work about as hard, they're about as talented, and this, that, and the other. And they say, why does this other person constantly get, get ahead of me, get things done that I don't get done? Well, it's because, probably because they're putting in a little bit more effort, and that effort turns in to a lot over a period of time. And the thing is, Carolyn, we always know what, we can improve on. You always know the one, there, there's always one more thing you can improve on. And so do that. And when you improve that, then other, th you know, the, the next one will come to you. So Larry, can anyone be a serial winner? At, not, can, not only can anyone, everyone should be because everyone should be on track in their life, accomplishing the things that are important to them. The things that they think are important, and when uh, achieving those things, they should be able to stay on track. They should be able to use the abilities they have. They should not let themselves be overwhelmed by life or confused. They should not let themselves give up because there's no need to. If you've got the desire to do things, a really strong desire, you probably have the ability and you can probably make that happen. There's no reason to go through life unfulfilled, unsatisfied because of some thing that you've let stall you out. And we should all win. Well, Larry, you're speaking my language, my dear. Tell me how, tell our listeners how we can buy your book, Serial Winner. It is available uh, pretty much everywhere, all the uh, standard uh, locations, the Amazons and Barnes and Nobles and all of those places. And uh, you, Or you, you can go to my website, Wydell on Winning, W-E-I-D-E-L on Winning.com, and I've got a lot of uh, helps there on, you know, blog posts and videos and training Stop. things. Yeah, and, lots of great content. So uh, those are the, that's where they can go. Excellent. And Larry, you are, all, are, you are also active on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, so I would encourage our audience members to check you out online there as well. Larry, what a joy to have you on. I so appreciated our conversation, and I agree. Serial winning is incredible, and I love the action steps that you have laid out for all of us, and I thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us today. It's been great. You are a true professional, and I'm excited about the impact you're making. Well, thank you, Larry. I wish you continued success, and I hope our professional paths cross again. Let's make sure they do. Absolutely. 
And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. The show is now available on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean and Stitcher, so you can listen and download this podcast in any number of digital platforms. Leave a comment. I'd be delighted to hear what you think of the show and appreciate your feedback. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.